What's up guys, with the new year upon you, I want you to start asking yourself, what is my goal? Before you do anything in the gym, you have to ask yourself, what is my goal? Because goals can be achieved with internal performance variables or external performance variables. It's very easy to do more reps, more sets, more load, if that's your goal. But if your goal is to build muscle, it might not be in alignment. Because building muscle is related to internal performance variables. Things that have to do with control, breaking the muscle, slowing down the muscle, owning the muscle. So this year as you're heading into the new year and you're setting your goals, ask yourself, do my, does my program, what I'm doing in the gym, match up with what I'm actually trying to get out of my, out of my body and out of my new year? All right, second workout of the day for today's muscle camp is a chest back workout. This is one of my favorite workouts. Old school programming, six sets of six, four sets of 10, two sets of 25. Uh, we're gonna be doing a bench press with chains and then dumbbell press and a pec deck for the chest and then for the back, we're gonna be doing a neutral grip chin, a, a variation of a seated row. We're gonna adapt it to each of your body structures and then we'll do a straight arm lat pull down. But we're really going to make this workout extra hard by adding the internal variables as well. The cues, all right, which uh, viewers at home will get to hear as the workout goes on. And I'll be coaching each one of you individually on. All right, any questions? When we're doing chin-ups, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they do chin-ups is flare their elbows out. What's the problem with this? What's, what's being challenged more, the biceps or the back? Where's the greatest for, yeah, exactly. So that's why you got guys with massive backs, or sorry, tiny backs who can do a ton of chin-ups. That's why mobility work on the shoulders is very, very important if you want to build a big back. So your elbows need to be facing forward. Shoulders in, and now you pull like that. And as soon as those things flare out, you're done. One of the best things you can do to feel your lats is just to find a, a lighter band just one arm um, pulls to your side at multiple angles and this is going to strengthen all parts of the lat. So there's a lower, mid and there's an upper portion of the lat and stand on 45 degrees. So I always do those before I um, train my back because if you can't feel it with 20 pounds, how are you going to feel it when you throw your 160, 70 pounds up there and try and pull yourself up, right? Back is a hard muscle to develop, but once you understand, you keep those shoulders in a neutral position, same cueing as the pull-up, so neutral shoulder, elbows are pointed down now. And now you pull through, and you keep pulling through, keep pulling through until your wrists are at your rib cage. And we're not doing this, our shoulder stays neutral the entire time. Today, to think about getting your wrist to your rib cage without doing this. What's happening to the lat when you go like this? You're stretching, giving yourself an advantage. If your goal is to build muscle, do we want advantages? We want disadvantages. Who's done straight arm pull downs before? Everybody know how to do these? Yeah, great exercise, a lot of people butcher them or don't take them through the full range of motion. So, so this would be like your you know, lat spread on stage. If you were a bodybuilder, you'd be thinking about spreading your lats like this and you're shoving this way. Everybody stand up tall and do a lat spread. But pretend there's a wall behind you and push against the wall, gauge your lats. Drop your arms down a little straighter now and keep that tension on. Who's feeling their lats really flare out? So that's what you want to be able to mimic while you're working with this exercise. And if you can hold it there for a second, that shows that you've got ownership of this weight and you'll get a much better workout without having to pump the weight up. All right, who wants a bigger chest? All right. <laughs> Who doesn't want a bigger chest, right? <laughs> guys, girls, everybody wants a bigger chest. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna teach you guys is how to do bench press with the chains. Uh, somebody said that the chains make it harder at the top. I used to always say that, and it's true, but a more accurate statement would be that ch adding chains makes it appropriate for your body. Because where is the exercise the easiest one on a bench press? Up here or down here? at the top. So the chains are going to make the exercise now more appropriate. Where you're stronger, it's now going to give you a challenge there. So that's the logic behind adding chains. Second exercise for chest is a neutral grip, a neutral grip chest press. What do most people think about with the dumbbell? How do I get this thing? I got to get this thing out. Oh, is the camera on? This is going on YouTube? Okay, I got to show them how I can get this thing up. I got it. It's up. It's up. 
How much is that dumbbell really moving when I'm thinking up? Like this much? Yeah, good job, man. You did 120s. You didn't move it six inches. You better be doing 120s if you're only moving it six inches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if you take, you know, 50, cut that weight in half, and now we actually start traveling with the weights. So today, your cue for chest is in and out. Last exercise. You guys can have fun with the weight here. A lot of different hand grips. Uh, how do we figure out the, 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 the seat position? Maybe where this is like parallel. Straight lines. Better? Straight line? Awesome. All right. Somebody come in here for a sec. Come feel my pecs like this. You can touch them, it's okay. They're a full, <laughs> a full D. Yeah. Are they hard? Yeah, they're hard. Now nah, feel them. Oh, even harder. Even harder, you wanna try them again? <laughs> Another cue that's really good is think about bringing your elbows together, not your hands together. So when you think about bringing your hands together, man, holy, up the weight, up the weight, again. See what I'm saying? External things. So we want to think about internal things, putting our bodies in a position that allows us to get a better squeeze with less load, less stress on the joint. So working with change, this is, a, this is an exercise you can be explosive, that's okay, that's great. Strong on the way up, good. I like the chance. Yeah, strong on the way up. That weight's trying to push you back down. Strong, straight up, yeah. Not much thinking here, this is a pretty straightforward one, perfect. Out, in, out, in. That looks great. Contract for me. Keep that on. Now don't lose it. Keep it on on the way down. I want you to fight the resistance on the way down. That looks great, Wade. Nice. Good. Just, just you know what, two minutes. Just, just next in line, no rest. Just keep moving from machine to machine by the time this is free. It should be your time to go. This textbook. For those at home, I want you guys to notice two things. Notice how the elbows are going in opposite directions, kind of like a fly. See the distance he's traveling? This is great. Squeeze it through, straight in the arms at the top. There you go. When you're at the halfway mark, your arms should start to be straighter. As you're pulling this into you, I want you to push your body towards it. Like not, don't actually move your body, but think about pushing your body into my hand. Think about pushing your body into my hand as you pull it. Does that feel different? Yeah. So th there you go. Because that's a narrower grip, it's keeping you kind of inside, so it's hard for you to really get your elbows behind you. So for you, I don't mind if you go with a wider, if you want to use like a different bar, okay. or even something like this. That, see this? A little bit wider, yeah. See how it's wider? Now it works. Remember what I said, you need to keep your shoulder neutral to be able to keep your lats engaged? Squeeze your pecs first. There you go. Okay, so you're doing what we don't want you to do. I need you to now straight out your legs. Stay tall. I want you to, you can't go any further than me. Now go. Keep your chest up as you pull. Don't let, see how you're letting your chest, you're letting your chest cave? Good. Control it, control it. You're changing your trunk position. Stay tall. Keep those legs straight. Now row, 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 row. Stay tall, stay tall, stay tall, stay tall. Good, much better. Good job. Look at this girl. Found, look at you go. Strong. Up. There you go. Drive that bar away from you. That bar's pushing you down. You oppose it. Good. Good job. Holy macro, that looks way better. So try and do that from your pecs. So when you bring your elbows together, use your pecs to do that. That's better. There you go, right? There you go. You're on a three second timer, so you gotta wait for the beat. That's tricky because you're going for a performance goal. But yeah. that doesn't mean you need to ignore these internal things. Right. When it comes to perform, you just perform, man. Yeah. You do as many reps as you can. So when it comes to form doing that competition, is it more efficient elbows out or elbows in well, a little? Or? Man. Yeah, but if you want to build a lot, building, doing a lot of reps for what you're doing versus building a big back are two separate goals. Yeah. Is anybody not feeling it in their back? You feeling it? Yeah. Lots are feeling good? Well, we went, I went from that to pull down, so we had to pull up, and I, didn't, I could barely do three, like, properly with my elbows in. Yes. Just on fire, right? It, so, again, it's very simple, guys. The way you train should reflect how you feel. 
If your goal is to build bigger muscle, you should feel it in the muscle. You shouldn't wake up tomorrow and feel it in other spots. That's how you know you've designed a program, you've done the things necessary that um, match what your original goal was. Let's go around and just hear feedback from each person. One thing you guys took away from that chest and back workout. It's important when you do chest flies that the elbows have to face each other. That little groove right yeah. there. That makes it really more intense. Mm -hmm. Feels much better. Good oh, yeah. pump, yeah. Well, I'd say uh, what you just touched on at the end there about uh, maybe the weights and the reps not being quite as important, just listening to your body, making sure you feel what you're trying to work out. Exactly. So for a lot of the back exercises that we did, the rotation of your elbows and shoulders matters a lot to how much you can engage your lats and actually end up working your back. And so since back was the goal, that helped immensely. I think from the three exercises I was doing for the chest, um, usually the pec deck was always the one where I consciously squeezed. Uh, and I found when I was doing the flies, I was squeezing a little bit different because I wasn't concentrating so much in that arc I was talking about. Um, the range of motion was a lot better and I really, you know, took into effect the whole, you know, it's one pound at a time coming, bringing it down, one pound at a time bringing it up. Well, I learned to focus on my internal goals, so I was trying to implement intentions when I was trying to squeeze my um, pectoral muscles. So I found that focusing on my internal goals helped me um, externalize my goals better. I found I was able to focus more so on the arc instead of just moving the weight up and down, which really actually exponentially made me feel my chest that much more. Um, yeah, for me it was, uh, again, really just focusing on, on the muscle group that we're working on and the proper technique to really um, focus on that muscle and get the most work done. And again, um, like someone else here said, you know, pound by pound, working through the muscle so you're just not swinging the weight back and forth. Well, for me, I really liked the using the chains on the on the bench press. It added like another extra, you know, ten or fifteen percent onto the a movement, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, most of the guys I did back with uh, covered most of it, but like when we were doing the rows, uh, hand placement was huge. So if you pick a attachment that has your too narrow of a grip, you're just going to kind of mess up your form, and it's you're not going to get the most out of it. So hand placement and picking an attachment that has the right. Um, Know, width apart from hand to hand is important. That's what I mean. That's a great, great point. All right, guys, thanks so much. <laughs> Give me seven now. Seven out of ten. Come on, guys. You all set goals. This is your chance to make it happen. You're either gonna do it or you're not. Let's go. No regrets. Let's go. I don't want, I don't want you guys leaving anything on the gym floor. Let's go. Leave nothing on the gym floor. Empty the tank here, guys. Empty the tank. Thank you.